to Speak the Word with Bible teacher Joanne Ramsey. Please join Pastor Ramsey now as she continues to teach God's soldiers how to wield the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. You know, saints, there is a king in me and there is a king in you. Hallelujah. And Joy was just singing about that. The name of Jesus is the most powerful name there is. There is no other name like Jesus. And saints, there is a king in you and there's a king in me. So that you need to know that you are not inferior to anyone. Are you hearing me? The king that's in you makes you. And when you are at your weakest, the king in you is going to stand up and say, I will take over. And this morning, as I was sharing with you earlier, you know, and I was sitting around feeling sorry for myself about some things, and, and, and the king just stood right up and took over for me. But you, know, <laughs> but you have to ask him to, you know, you really, you have to ask him to. You know, there's things that you really, you can't handle on your own, and you just need him to take over for you. And because there's a king in you, you can do all things, children of God, through him who strengthens you. Are you hearing me? There's nothing through him that you cannot do. You know, David says in Psalm 73, 26, he says, My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. Hallelujah. He's our strength and he is mine forever. And he's yours too, saints. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10 in the New Living Translations, each time he said, talking about God, that my grace is all you need. My power works best in your weakness. And this is what God was telling Paul. So now Paul said, I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. And this, of course, was right after Paul had been praying about the thorn in his flesh. Uh, uh, the thorn in his side. That's still his flesh, right? <laughs> thorn in his side. And that, brothers and sisters, is what we're going to be talking about tonight. Uh, but it occurred to me, <clears throat> I get tons and tons of emails. And a lot of the emails I also get are from other nations and other countries. And, and so I decided I'm going to put this little blip in there, you know, for their benefit. <laughs> because they don't realize that they send their emails through radio, different radio stations, and they don't realize I do get their message, but when I respond, that they don't really get them back. So uh, I was going to say before I begin, I want to let God's children know that are listening to this message through, through WLSG or any other internet, because we're on several internet stations, please that when you email me for prayer, please include your email so that I can respond to your prayer request. When you go through the stations, I, I do really get your email, but I'm not able to respond. And I really would like to respond to your email. And I would love to send you prayers or, or pray with you. I know it's a little difficult to send all the stuff to uh, some of the countries. I get a lot of emails from Africa and London. As a matter of fact, I got one today from Buenos Aires, uh, Argentina. So you get, I get them from everywhere. And uh, I would just love to be able to respond back to them and pray with them. So that was for their benefit. Now we're going to talk about how God's grace is sufficient for your every need, no matter what that need is, okay? And I know that sometimes that it may feel like the king in you has gotten up and left. It just feels like sometimes that he just left. But children of God, according to his word, he has not gone anywhere. But you're under God, according to God's word, you know that your feelings will lie to you. And Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. He said, who really knows how bad that it is? What he's saying here is that you cannot trust your feelings. He's telling you that you cannot trust your emotions. Are you hearing me? That's what I was doing earlier. We, we're all guilty of this, you know. We, we're all guilty of trusting how we feel and our emotions, but we can't trust how, how we're feeling, and we sure can't trust our emotions because, you know, God said that they're going to lie to you. The only thing you can trust really and, and depend on is the Word of God. Yeah. That, that's the only thing. Because in reality, the Lord has never left you. Hallelujah. He says that He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He tells us in Deuteronomy 31, 8, And the Lord, it says, He is the one who goes before you, and He will be with you, and He will not leave you nor forsake you. 
So do not fear, he said, or be dismayed. Now this is what Moses was telling Joshua before he was to lead the Israelites into the promised land that God had sworn to give to them. Saints, like I said, I know that some of you are probably going through some difficult times, and it could be health issues tonight, or it could be difficulties with your job, or it could be your finances. I really don't know. And maybe you have already been earnestly seeking the Lord for His help, yet you feel like that you have not heard from Him. I know how that feels too. You can be seeking the Lord all the time about something and you don't feel like that you're getting an answer. But He is answering you. He is always working. In the supernatural, He is always working whether you feel like it is or not. There again, you can't trust your feelings because your feelings are going to lie to you, sugar. Trust me. That was lying to me. <laughs> Going to lie to you too. You feel like he's not there, but saints, he is here. He is still king. He's king and he's the Lord of Lords. As Joy was just singing. You know, the late Dr. S.M. Lockridge, a pastor from San Diego, California, said these words in a sermon in 1976. He said, my king was born the king. The Bible says he's a seven-way king. One, he's the king of the Jews. He says, and that's an ethnic king. Two, he's the king of Israel. That's a national king. Three, he's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's king of the heavens. And he's the king of glory. And he's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. And now that's my king. Praise God. And that's your king too, saints. That's your king too. David said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. My king, he says, is the only one, David said, of whom there are no means of measure that can define his limitless love. Hallelujah. Children of God, you have to know that you are his handiwork tonight. You have to know that he loves you more than I can stand up here and declare to you. You are his handiwork. It tells you in Ephesians 2.10, he says, For we are God's own handiwork. You are His workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. And He tells us in Genesis 1.27 in the New Living Translation, He says, So God created human beings in His own image, in the image of God. He created them, male and female, He created them. And that's the real truth. But sometimes, sometimes, the devil gets you to thinking and feeling something different from what the real truth is. Are you hearing me? You know, I know the other day when I was preparing this message and I was seeking the Lord on what to feed you, I couldn't seem to get a clear picture and I couldn't seem to get an understanding of what God wanted to share with what me. He wanted me to share with you. You know, He had given me a title to the message and He had not given me very much more to go on. But I knew that whatever I brought to you tonight had to come from Him. Otherwise, it would do you no good. Do you know that? I can stand up here and I can talk a blue streak, but unless God's anointing is on it, it's not going to benefit you. For only the anointed Word of God is going to minister to you, saints. So for a short time, just like you do sometimes, I allowed the devil to beat up on me. I allowed him to eat my lunch and pop the bag. Right. I tell you what, when he eats your lunch and pops the bag, you know it, saints. Just like some of you do at times, I know you do. And he made me think that God was disappointed with me. How many of you yeah. feel like sometimes that God's disappointed in you? Yeah. We all do. But you know that's a lie coming from the pits of hell, don't you? Accuser of the brother. Accuser of the brother. Hallelujah. But he made me think that God was disappointed with me and not pleased with me just like he does you, always accusing God's children. And Revelations 12, 10 says that he accuses you day and night before your father. But it also says that the devil has been thrown down to the earth. Hallelujah. That means he's been cast down. Hallelujah. He's still down here doing his work, but he's been cast down. And that's good news. So I began to pray. And I said, Lord, you know I want to please you. Please tell me what I can do. And in my spirit, when I was praying that, in my spirit, <clears throat> excuse me, I felt the Lord say to me, He said, I'm never disappointed with you, Joe. He said, you get disappointed with yourself, but I never get disappointed with you. Saints, you get disappointed with yourself, 
but God never really gets disappointed in you. And you can say, well, Pastor Joe, I, I said this and I did that and I should have done that and I didn't do that. I know God didn't like that and I know he must have been upset with me and he must have been disappointed with me, but I'm telling you he wasn't. The Bible says he'll never get angry with you again. So if you think he's angry with you, then you know the devil's telling you that because the Bible says he's not. And then you're going to have to choose who you're going to believe. You're going to believe the lies of the, say, uh, the devil or you're going to believe what God says. I, I choose to believe what God says. Praise God. And then he brought back these scriptures to me that confirms to me and that will confirm to you that he loves me just as much as he does Jesus. That's a lot. You know, I don't think we really think about some of the scriptures sometimes when we read them. But when he says that he loves me as much as he loves Jesus, you know, a lot of people would say that's heresy. You know, that, that can't be true. But he says in John 17, 23, in a New Living Translation, if you want to write this down and read it for yourself, Jesus says, I am, I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world would know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right there in black and white. Praise his holy name. You know, in Isaiah 49, 16, in Amplified Bible, it says, Behold, I have imprinted a tattoo, a picture of you in the palm of my hands. The Bible says he has a picture of you and me in the palm of his hands. Hallelujah. He also says that you're precious in his sight. Okay? And that he loves you. Saints, I don't know what you're waiting for today or what more proof you need to know that the King of Kings and the Lord, the Lord is here for you tonight and that he loves you beyond measure. Saints, I want you to know that for thousands of years, according to the scriptures, Jewish people had been looking for a Messiah. They were expecting a great military leader, one who would overthrow all their enemies and restore Israel to its former greatness and his glory. What they had not expected was that king would be a carpenter. But throughout Jesus' early life, he gave them evidence upon evidence that he was who he says he was. But you know, Jesus proved his identity to them time and again by his miracles. He proved his identity by his signs and by his wonders. But children of God, I want to know what more does our king have to do tonight to show you that he is here for you? I know that a lot of you here tonight are looking for answers to your situations. And as I said earlier, some of you need healing for your bodies. I've already spoken to some of you. You need healings for your bodies. You might need healing for your family members or for a friend. But I want you to know that God is here tonight to heal you. And if a healing is what you need, the power of God is here to do it. And I'm going to be willing to pray and lay hands on you, anoint anybody that needs prayer tonight. And also have a couple of the pastors here tonight. So we got, we got plenty of pastors. And, and not only that, you need to also remember when you don't have a pastor around, as a believer, you have the same authority that I do. Mm -hmm. The Bible says believers go and cast out mm -hmm. demons and lay hands on the sick. And if you are a believer, then you can lay hands on the sick. You don't need me to do it. I mean, I can do it and I love to do it. But you can lay hands on people yourself. It, all, it, all it takes is just faith. And just acting on what the Word says. Some of you might be looking to get a breakthrough in your finance tonight. But I want you to know that God is also here to help you get that breakthrough too. And let me say this. The Jews might have been looking for someone to overcome their enemies. But you don't have to look any further, saints. For you have found the one who has overcome your enemy, the devil, for you. Hallelujah. He is the King of kings and he's the Lord of lords. And according to Galatians 2.15, Jesus has disarmed the principalities and the powers that were ranged against you and made a bold display and public example of them and triumphing over them in him and in it the cross. What am I saying, saints? I'm saying that the Lord has fought your battles for you by, defeat, by defeating Satan for you. Did you hear that? 
He has overcome your greatest enemy and he has made you the victorious one. As a matter of fact, he says in 2 Corinthians 2.14, and this is God's words translations, because there's hundreds of translations, but I, I really sticked about two or three. And it says, but I thank God who always leads us in victory because of Christ wherever we go. God uses us to make a clear, to make clear what he means to... God uses us to make clear what it means to know Christ. It's like a fragrance that fills the air. Praise God. You know, God's word says that you have overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of your testimony. Now, this is what it says in Revelations 12, 11, that you are already the overcomer. He's already made you the overcomer. And, and an example of what your testimony can be. Now, I want you to listen up to this because when the Bible says that you have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony, then you need to have a testimony. Amen. And your testimony can be, for example, it can say, uh, my testimony is that by His stripes I'm healed. My testimony is that I'm more than a conqueror. My testimony is that it gives my Father good pleasure to do good things for me. And you can go on and on and on. And sometimes I do that, you know. I say, well, Lord, I just thank you that you said I have become the overcomer, that I'm overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of my testimony. And my testimony is that I am an overcomer. My testimony is that I am victorious through you who makes me victorious. Are you hearing me? And you become the overcomer, saints, by wielding the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And the Word of God is like I was telling others today. Uh, David and I are not in this to make money. It does, uh, we do appreciate all your support because it does help us reach more people. But that's why we keep bringing the CDs. And that's why I keep mailing the CDs out. Is because we want to make sure that you're well armed. You're not going to be a good soldier if you don't have some good ammunition to fight with. You don't send any soldier off the battle without equipping him with something to fight with. Are you hearing me? And you need training. You don't send soldiers out without training them either. You wouldn't last very long. And this is one of the uh, mistakes a lot of the churches are making. They're winning souls, but they're not discipling them. And so they're, they're not getting them prepared for the war. You know, you can't, you know, uh, Wendy's husband back there is a, a military officer. And, and my late husband uh, was a military officer. And I know that they didn't just go into the military, you know. He was in the Navy and I was in the Air Force. They didn't just go in there and say, now you're going to go out here and fight this battle. They sent them to basic training. And a lot of them, you know, uh, went to college, went to school to learn how to be a good soldier. But people today are not doing that. You know, they go to church, but they're not really getting what they need to fight their battles with. And you've got to have ammunition to fight your battles with. Saints, are you going to lose? You, you, like I said, you're unarmed. And so our goal is to give you the equipment that you need to fight with. And if you want to help us back, that is good too. That's a bonus. But the main thing is that you just need something to fight with. Like I said, I can't, I can't imagine anybody sending soldiers out. You know, they, they, you know people boast about the souls to getting saved. I, I love getting souls saved. I really do. I love witnessing to people. And I wished I was equipped to teach them, you know, equip them, you know, with the word that they do need to fight their battles. And I've suggested this to some of the churches, you know, when they come forth and they accept Christ, take this opportunity to take them aside and talk to them. You know, you have Bible classes, you know, they don't have to become a member of the church just to go to the Bible class. They just need to get in there and learn everything they can learn. So that you can survive while you're here on this earth. You, you born again, you're going to go to heaven. But you really would like to enjoy your trip. I'm going on vacation. I would like to enjoy my trip. <laughs> I don't wait to wait till I get there to have fun. I want to have fun while I'm getting there. Are you hearing me? So now you have to make a decision on whether or not God's word is truth. And then you have to decide whether or not you're going to receive it and you're going to have to make a decision if you're going to act on it. You know, as I said, I am anointed to teach and preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, but it's up to you to believe it and it's up to you to receive it. I can't force feed you. I can give you what the Lord gives me to share with you, but I can't make you eat it. 
Because in order to get an answer to your situation, you're going to have to believe what the Word of God says. Amen. There is no other answer. And you're going to have to take that Word and you're going to have to speak that Word to your mountain. You are the one to speak to your mountain. I would love to speak to your mountain for you. And as a matter of fact, you can take some of my CDs and prayers and you can and, and take those prayers and confess them over your situation and, 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 and take them and do whatever you want to with them. If they are the word of God and you can use those to speak to your mountains if you can't think of any of your own. You say, Lord, according to this, I can do that. As a matter of fact, I was writing a prayer today. The Lord was giving me a prayer for this message and it was so powerful because, you know, it was just nothing but the word of God. Just not but the word of God. <clears throat> you have to have faith in the power of God's word like the centurion did in Matthew 8.8. 8. By faith he understood that even as his authority as a centurion made it possible for him to give a command with the full assurance that that command would be obeyed. When that centurion gave that command, he knew that it was going to be uh, obeyed. And, and the centurion in the biblical days was ahead over about 100 soldiers. And, and, and like I said, Wendy can testify, and some of you have been in the military too. Uh, when, when a commanding officer tells you something, you don't ask him any questions, you just do it. Isn't that right? His words have authority. God's word is authority. His, his word is the highest authority there is. There is none other. So Christ's authority as the Son of God made it possible for him to simply give a command and sickness had to flee. His servant was healed. Remember the moment that Jesus spoke the word and Jesus marveled at the centurion's faith. Today, children of God, under a new covenant, you and I have been given that same authority. According to Mark uh, eleven twenty three 23 in the New Living Translations, he says, I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea. And he says, it will obey you. And he says, it will happen. He says, but you must believe that it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Now, I'm about to speak something and I want you to make sure that you get what I'm saying. He did not say no doubt in your mind. For you are going to be tempted to have doubt in your mind. Are you hearing me? Your mind, your head. Your head is going to is go crazy sometimes. <laughs> it can tell you a lot of stuff. He said, no doubt in your heart. The devil, was, he's going to come along and he's going to try to put some doubt in your mind or in your head. And he's going to try to make you think that you don't have any faith. But you need to hold on to your faith. Because you, you can have doubt in your mind and in faith in your heart is still going to work because faith is not a head thing, but faith is a heart thing. Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. Faith is a heart thing. Yeah. So even though in your mind the devil is planting these lies in your mind, in your head, that this is not working and that you prayed and, and you ain't seeing nothing, you have faith in your heart that when you prayed that you received what you asked for and you just keep hanging on to that faith, your faith that's in your heart, not in your mind or not in your head. That's why after you speak to your mountain, whatever your mountain is, you just continue to speak God's word over it. Remember what God's word said. He says his word is like a hammer in, 23, 29, in Jeremiah 23, 29. He says, does not my word burn like fire, says the Lord? Is it not a mighty hammer that smashes a rock to pieces? Selah. And all Selah means is what, saints? Just stop and think about that. You know, in one of my sermons, and I preached so many, I don't remember which one it was, but I, I brought some rocks and a hammer to demonstrate that one night. <laughs> and that's all it is. God's Word, it acts like a hammer. You just... It, it, in the most stubborn resistance, the Bible says. Some of them are not little pebbles, some of them are rocks. Amen. And you might, not, you might need a bigger hammer. <laughs> you know, there, there's a house that's across the water from us, and it's deteriorated to the point that the uh, 
city has taken it over, which is good for us because everything was rotting over there into the water, their bulkhead and everything. And not only did it not look good, but it was not good for the water. <clears throat> and they came in there, you know, and it was a brick house. And uh, it, like I said, I guess they've been trying to get them to do something for several years. And they've just, it's just gotten to the point where the city had to take it over. But they, within a couple of days with their, the right equipment, they have demolished that house. The chimney is still standing. And there's a couple other things. But I mean, they have gradually taken that big piece of equipment and they have torn that rock from rock for rock down. And that's really what I'm saying about that mountain that's in your way. That, you know, it could be a stubborn sickness. It could be a, some other thing you're believing God for in your job, your children, whatever, whatever that stubborn thing is that you just need to just get the biggest hammer, which is the Word of God, and you just keep hitting that thing and hitting that thing till it comes down. Amen. And sometimes it's going to take you a little longer. Yeah. You just, you know, the Bible says don't grow weary in doing good. He says because if you don't, he says you will reap a reward. Okay? And another thing, he says that you're also going to need to bring every thought that the devil puts in your mind, he says, into captivity. And he tells you this in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 3 through 5. He said, bring every thought into captivity that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. Okay? I tell people the way you bring a thought into captivity is when the devil puts this thought in your mind, is just ignore that. I was saying that, I think, in the wind the other day. I was talking about a friend. I said, you just tell her that every time that thought comes to her mind, just ignore that and just say what God said. In other words, if the, if the devil is saying, hey, you're not healed, you're never going to be healed, and you went and had that therapy, but it's not going to work, then you just open up your mouth and you just call him what he is, which is a liar, and, and you just say, devil, you're a liar by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. He sent his word and removed all sickness and destruction from my body. You know, and, and so this is... You, you, you capture that thought by repeating what God said. That captures a thought. You don't capture the thought by thinking about it. My daughter asked me once, well, Mama, can I just think about, you know, when I said we confess God's word every day, she said, can't I just think it? I said, no, you can't think it. You've got to open up your mouth. <laughs> because I tell you that Satan will fill your mouth, your mind with doubt and lies, saints. He tried to do that with me, and he's going to try to do that with you. And not only did he try to do it with me last week, but telling me God was disappointed in me. Um, uh, he started telling me some things last night and this morning, too. And you've got a choice, you know. You can either believe it or you can just believe what the Word says. Amen. And how many of you know that when you had your feelings hurt or you get angry, it's not really easy thing to give it to God. You really want to take care of it yourself. And you really want to say a few things before he gets his chance. But you can't do that. You can't do that. You've got to hold your tongue. If you really, if you really love the Lord, because the Lord says that he don't want you to get in strife. He don't want you to get angry. And, and he says you will get angry. He said, but you get angry and sin not. And what he's saying is, okay, so you're going to get angry, but just because you're angry doesn't mean you've got to sin. He said, I, I've given you everything you need. I've given you the grace to keep your mouth shut. You know? And it ain't easy. I tell you, it's not easy. But I do know this, you can do it. God would never tell you to do something you couldn't do. <coughs> Excuse me. I can remember back in the late 90s, when I was in such pain with my arm that I couldn't move it up or down, I couldn't move it one way or the other, I couldn't even lift a glass of water with it. And some of you I know have heard this testimony. As a matter of fact, I was listening to a message today and I was given this testimony. But uh, for those of you that didn't hear, I'm going to give it again. <laughs> but you know, the pain at times be so excruciating that I just break out in a cold sweat. And I prayed over my arm, and I spoke to every joint. I spoke to, I spoke to every muscle. I spoke to every cell, every nerve. I spoke to every part of my arm, and I commanded it to be healed and to function the way God had created it to function. And did it obey me? 
Yes, it did. However, I did not, let me repeat that, I did not experience full manifestation of the healing of my arm for several months. I did not experience full manifestation, all the healing, for several months. However, my arm was healed the moment that I prayed. There was no evidence. You can't wait till you, ex till you see something in the natural before you believe because that is not faith. Now faith is. Hebrews 11 one said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So you've got to have faith in the things that you can't see and that you can't feel. That's what faith is. You have to have faith not in your ability, but in God's Word. You have to have faith in His ability. Okay? I had to continue to speak God's Word over my arm. I, I didn't ask Him again, and I, I, I clear this up. Uh, you pray. Uh, you don't necessarily have to ask God to heal that arm again or that leg. I just kept using His Word to thank Him for healing it. You know, uh, I know there are some times when you can pray and pray again. But there are some things that when you pray that you need to believe you receive it when you pray. Because this is what the Bible teaches us. He said, when you, when, you when you pray, believe that you receive it. And do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass and you can have whatever you say. Now, that's what the Bible teaches us. Okay? So... I would just continue. So like I said, there's times when you can pray, uh, the, you know, the prayer again. But there are some things, the petition prayers and some prayers that you ask God because it shows doubt. And the book of James says, let him that doubts thinks he'll receive nothing from me. It, you know, that he's, he, that he's wavered. Don't, don't waver. You know, and that's what the Bible says in Hebrews 4. I think, he, or I think it's in 4. Uh, he, and uh, Abraham, it said that Abraham did not waver and doubt in unbelief, you know, and doubt and unbelief. But he just continued to give glory to God. He just continued to give him glory. And that's what I'm saying to you tonight. You just continue to give glory to God for your healing or for your promotion or whatever that is that you're praying for. I would just use that word like a hammer. I would just keep hammering away. And I would say, and these are examples that you can use too. I would say, Father, I just thank you that every bone, every muscle, every nerve in my arm is working the way that you created it to work. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that I'm not moved by what I feel and I'm not moved by what I see. I'm only moved by what the Word of God says. And your Word said that by your stripes I'm healed. And that you sent your word and removed all sickness from me. It tells you this in Psalms 107, 20. Praise God. You know, in Acts 20, 24, Paul said, none of these things move me. And I've said that so many th times, you know, because I'm praying for something and I'm not seeing any difference. Or maybe sometimes things actually get worse. A lot of times they just actually get worse. Seems like the more you pray, the worse to get. But you know, that should make you happy. And not sad. Because if you're praying and things are getting worse, then you know you're blessing right around the corner. Because the devil is working overtime trying to make you think that God didn't hear you and that God's not going to answer your prayer. So instead of getting upset, be happy. Amen. And start thanking God. Say, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. If you had not heard my prayer and you was not working on it, the devil sure wouldn't be working so hard to keep me from believing you. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? <laughs> oh, he's good. Children of God, you're going to have to become like Paul when it comes to letting the things in the natural dictate to you whether you were healed or anything else for that matter. You cannot let Satan dictate to you whether you're healed. You can't let what's going on in the natural keep you from receiving your blessing. Saints, so many of God's children, and we've talked about this before, if they don't get evidence right away, they don't believe that God's answered them. And they're not sure that if He's even heard them. And that's sad. But that is a lie from the pits of hell. You know, I've prayed and I've had manifestations right away. 
But most of my healings have been a process, and I've had a lot of healings because the Lord has healed me of so many things, and I don't have time to go into all of them, but eventually you'll find one of them on one of those CDs back there. <clears throat> but let me tell you this. Our Lord, He is the King of kings, and He's the Lord of lords. Whether it takes five minutes, whether it takes five months, or five years to get manifestation, it doesn't matter. He is still the King of Kings, and He is still the Lord of Lords. And I say this a lot, Lord, it does, I, I'm really, I know, I'm really confident this is going to happen, but if it doesn't, you're still King, you're still Lord over my life, and I'm going to love you just as much one way or the other. He is the only one, saints, who can supply all of your needs simultaneously. He supplies strength for the weak. He guards and He guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the leopards. He forgives sinners. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. And He serves the unfortunate. Hallelujah. And He is the Prince of Princes. And He's the King of Kings. And He's the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And, and, and it says that His mercy is everlasting and His love never changes, saints. His word is enough. His word is more than enough. And His grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. He's God's Son. He's my King. He always has been and He always will be. Herod couldn't kill Him. And death couldn't handle Him. And the grave couldn't hold Him. Praise God forevermore. That's my King. And that's your King too, children of God. Must I go on? You know, whatever you need from Him, I want you to know that He's here for you tonight. I hope that you came expecting to receive from God. And I pray that you came expecting to receive from Him in a powerful way. Because He's never going to disappoint you, brothers and sisters. Never. Number one, you have to believe. Someone asked me tonight, what do I need to be healed? Number one, you have to believe that He's able. Number two, you must believe that he's willing. And number three, you need to believe that you receive when you ask. Not when it shows up, but when you ask. And you might be thinking tonight, Pastor Joe, I have been prayed for before and I didn't get healed. You might be thinking, I have prayed and asked God to give me a better job or a raise and I still don't have it. And you could be thinking, saints, that you probably won't get it tonight either. But you still might come up for the prayer line. But I can tell you this. With that kind of thinking, you're not going to get it. Amen. That kind of thinking is not going to get it. You have to know that it's according to your faith that you receive. The centurion believed that there was power in Jesus' words. As Joy was just singing, there's power in the name of Jesus. Jesus told him that he, that he could come and heal his servant. But the centurion said, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come into my home. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. And it said Jesus was amazed at the centurion's faith. Jesus says, I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus told him, he says, you go back. Because you have believed, it has happened. And the servant was healed that very same hour. In closing, let me say this. Jesus tells us in John 14, 13, that whatever we ask of Him, that He will do it, so that the Father might be glorified. You may not be aware of this, saints, and this is another one of these. Listen up and pay attention. I hope you've been listening to all of it, but especially listen to some of these. So when they, when they translated, <clears throat> you may not be aware of this, but Greek is written backwards. Some of you know that. And there are words in the Greek that they don't have a word for in the English. So they put what they think. And in, that, in, in, in the scripture where it says, So when they translated that scripture where it says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. Okay? You know where it says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. 
in the Greek, this is what it means. If I don't have it, I'll make it for you. Okay? If I don't have it, I'll make it for you. That's what it means in the Greek. As a matter of fact, it kind of makes me want to go study Greek. <laughs> I'm still working on English. So, <laughs> so know tonight, saints, that whatever your needs are, Jesus is here for you, and if he doesn't have it, he'll make it for you. He'll make it for you. He's your king, and he is your Lord. Praise his holy name. And he's a father who loves you more than I can stand up here and testify for. All you need is to have the faith to receive it. I'm going to close in prayer. And all of you that need uh, prayer, uh, if you need healing in your body, I would like for you to start thinking uh, like the lady that had the issue of blood. She had a vocal point. You know, she had, when she made contact, she had contact. So she kept saying, if only I could touch him, if only I could touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be healed. And the Bible says she just kept saying, if only I could touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. If only I could touch that. So I want you to start getting a mindset as I pray and close here that I'm going up and Pastor Joe's going to anoint me and she's going to pray for me. And when she prays for me and, and anoints me, I believe that I'm going to receive my healing. The moment she does that, I'm receiving my healing. So go ahead. You cannot get anything unless you expect it. So always be expecting. The Bible tells us to always be expecting. So when you come forth tonight, come forth expecting whatever it is. If it's a breakthrough in your finances, if a healing in your body, you have to be expecting. Okay? And I'm going to close in prayer. Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you for this awesome word tonight. I thank you, Father, for all the sheep that you brought out to hear this word. I thank you, Father, that they came hungry and they came thirsty and they came expecting. But, Lord, I thank you that based on the word of God, that you said that your word is followed by signs and wonders. So we are fully expecting to see signs and wonders follow this word that has been preached here tonight. And, Father, I just thank you for your presence here. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you again, and we just thank you for your presence. And Holy Spirit, I just pray that you will work with me again tonight and that you will let me continue to be a vessel for you and that you will let Jesus shine in these people as they come forth tonight, Father. And again, we just thank you for everyone that is here tonight, and we just thank you for your presence. And I thank you for the word that you have given me to feed the sheep, Lord. And, and I believe it was an anointed word, Lord. And I believe that it has ministered to the ones that you wanted it ministered to, Father. And Lord, I just thank you for their breakthroughs and in advance. And I just thank you, Lord, for their healings. I just thank you, Father. For it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you. Amen.